As we saw in the previous tutorial, that when we dry moist samples, we have a constant rate period and a falling rate period. Those two periods are separated by the critical moisture content value, which is at the end of the constant rate period uh, before the falling rate period begins. Now, in this tutorial, we will look at how to calculate drying time for the falling rate period. First, uh, two, three observations. In the uh, constant rate period, the product surface temperature is the same as the wet bulb temperature of the air. Uh, that is because there is sufficient water at the surface of the uh, product during the constant rate period. However, in the uh, falling rate period, there is not sufficient water in the product to ensure that the entire surface has a film of water. So after the moisture content goes below the critical moisture content, the product temperature increases above the wet bulb temperature, uh, which was the case for the constant rate period. The second observation is that the moisture diffusion inside the uh, product becomes rate controlling because now the structure of the product itself, the internal structure of the product itself begins to control how much moisture can transfer from the inside to the surface. And also the product shape begins to play a role. So we will here look at the infinite slab geometry. We will assume that our product uh, is of an infinite slab shape. Recall from the tutorial on transient heat transfer that infinite slab is a slab of a known thickness, but it extends to infinity in all other directions. So it's a very thin slab. Uh, that is our sample is of this shape. So in case of the infinite slab geometry, we can write a ratio of moisture contents as W minus WE, where WE is the moisture content at equilibrium, divided by WC minus WE, where uh, WC is the moisture content at the critical point between constant rate and falling rate and of course WE is the equilibrium moisture content. This ratio equals 8 over pi square times exponent of in parentheses minus pi square capital D times T divided by 4 DC square where DC is the characteristic dimension which is the half thickness in case of a slab. As we can see uh, in this uh, infinite slab, the uh, half thickness is uh, shown here. A capital D is the effective mass diffusivity. This is the property of the food material being dried and this the units are meter square per second. And T is the drying time. We can rearrange the terms in this equation and write this expression in terms of T, time. So time for the falling rate will be 4 dc square divided by pi square d times natural log of 8 over pi square. In parentheses, we have the moisture ratio Wc minus We divided by W minus WE. So this equation can be used to determine the time during the falling rate period. This is for a food of an infinite slab shape. Similar expressions can be written for other shapes like infinite cylinder or a sphere. Next, uh, let's look at briefly of how we may determine drying time in case of a spray dryer. Now, as you know, in a spray dryer, we have a liquid nozzle where we form droplets and those droplets fall inside a chamber and exposed to heated air. So as those droplets move from top to bottom, 
the water is evaporated and you have a dry powder at the bottom of the spray dryer. Now, the first period at the top will be constant rate period because this is where the water is evaporating from the droplet. There is sufficient amount of water. So the formula for the constant rate period is what we saw in another tutorial. Uh, so Tc equals HL times W0 minus WC divided by HA over TA minus TS. Now in this case we are looking at a spherical droplet so uh, the surface area of a sphere is uh, 4 pi r square so we can write Tc equals HL times W0 minus WC divided by 4 pi r d square this is for the droplet initially uh, times h times t a minus t s uh, so r d is the radius of the droplet soon after the droplet is formed in the nozzle of the sprayer now it has been determined that the convective heat transfer coefficient uh, it can be written as H equals K over RD. So we can substitute for H in this equation as TC equals HL time W0 minus WC divided by 4 pi RD times KA in parentheses we have TA minus TS. So that is for the constant rate period. Now for the falling rate period we need to have an expression for a spherical geometry and uh, the expression for for a sphere is TF equals RP square where RP will be the radius of the particle at the critical point that is after the constant rate period is over in the spray dryer divided by pi square capital D times natural log 6 over pi square in parentheses WC minus WE divided by W minus WE. So the total time needed to dry a food in a spray dryer since uh, we start off with a droplet formed at the top and uh, we essentially are drying it all the way to powder at the bottom. We have both the constant rate period and the falling rate period so T equals HL times W0 minus WC divided by 4 pi RD KA TA minus TS and that's the term for the constant rate period and we add plus RP square divided by pi square D times natural log of 6 over pi square WC minus WE divided by W minus WE. So this is the total time that will be needed in the spray dryer to dry a liquid droplet formed at the sprayer all the way to the powder and then it includes both the constant rate and the falling rate periods.